Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I got some exciting news, some surprising news uh, about the future of the video game industry, in particular the Electronic Entertainment Expo E3, which for my money hasn't existed since 2019. For some of you guys, hasn't really existed, I don't know, probably since 2015. And well, for many other people, uh, if you want to just count factually, I guess we technically had a digital show last year, so it's at least been over a year since E3 has even mattered. However, I will note some important things about E3 as we go here, as there was a massive announcement today from the ESA uh, about E3 next year, and a lot of it looks actually extremely optimistic and smart, which is not something we usually associate with decisions by the ESA for E3. Now, before we dive into this, I wanna remind you that, hey, I am Nathaniel Rubble Jan, so I want you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're on our road to 80,000 subscribers. Brand new giveaway begins at 80K, but you know what? Enough of that. Let's get into the news. And I'm getting this news off of GameIndustry.biz, although it was directly linked by the official E3 account on Twitter. So that's why we're going to go with this one, because this is where they decided to break the news. All right, up here you say pack, you up here at GameIndustry.biz, and you see PAX organizer Reed Pop to run E3 2023. The entertainment... Software Association announced today that E3 2023 will be organized in partnership with Reed Pop. The latter is the company behind PAX, EGX, Star Wars Celebration, New York Comic Con, and other events, as well as the owner of several leading games media brands, including GameIndustry.biz. So that would explain why they're using this website. Together, the two organizations will host E3 2023 in a traditional home at the Los Angeles Convention Center during the second week of June. Okay, so we now have an idea of when it's actually going to happen. The event will encompass both digital showcases and in-person components that will also be open to consumers. Media registration, which has been streamlined and given added security following previous year's leaks, will open later in the year. And they mean later this year, which is new. Usually you can't even register until 2023 at all. Media will be able to register this year, though. For information on confirmed exhibitors and event schedules, as well as hotels and travel guides, will also be shared in the months to come. So they're actually already planning the event and getting companies to commit now. Again, kudos to Reed Pop uh, for being ahead of the game. Uh, for business inquiries, you can obviously email e3 at readpop.com. It says, we are thrilled to bring back E3 as an in-person event with Reed Pop, a global leader in producing pop culture events, said ESA President and CEO Stanley Pierre-Lewis. The past years uh, have confirmed that E3 convenes our industry like no other event. Reed Pop brings world-class talent and a keen understanding of the video game industry, which will serve to enhance E3 experience for years to come. Reed Pop President Lance Fenderson added, it is a tremendous honor and privilege for Reed to take on the responsibilities of bringing E3 back in 2023. With the support and endorsement of the ESA, we are going to build a world-class event to serve the global industry in new and broader ways than we already do at Reed Pop through our portfolio of world-leading events and websites. This is obviously all just sort of taking me aback, and I'm going to explain a little bit why I'm excited. First off, every event that Reed Pop runs, whether it's PAX, whether it's the Star Wars Celebration, whether it's New York Comic Con, are all highly, highly successful events with very little criticism for how those events are ran. Now, E3 could arguably be one of the largest events they run with the most amount of industry people involved, but they have created a reputation with companies, including Nintendo and Microsoft and Sony. I don't know if they can get Sony back, but they have created reputations with these companies through these other events that they have participated in to be really well run, really well organized, and no last minute shenanigans. The biggest thing that E3's had is like you couldn't register for a media badge until like two months before uh, before the event began or three months before the event, event began in June. So that was really weird. Uh, they wouldn't release an exhibitor list until, I don't know, a month before the event began. Like E3 always sort of felt like, hey, we just assume people are going to be there and we're going to hodgepodge everything in the closing months leading into it. Whereas this company is planning now. They're contacting companies now. They're getting commitments now. They're setting up the website for registration now. They're taking inquiries now. And ESA has never really done that for E3. And while they used to do okay when they had Jeff Keighley helping organize the event, look, this is like really the next best thing. If you're not gonna bring Jeff Keighley back in the fold, which for many of you, that actually is a positive because you don't like the way Jeff Keighley runs his events anyways, then this is obviously one of the power moves that ESA had under its belt because the big concern when they committed to E3 next year, because by the way, they did commit to do an E3 next year, earlier was that nobody actually believed the ESA was going to be able to go through with it, or if they did, the event could end up being a hot 
mess. Instead, they have hired a company that runs these sort of events every single year and does it really, really well and has them highly organized. So no security problems, no account leaks, no major issues. It's a company the industry trusts. Very smart move by the ESA. I have no idea how much Repop is getting paid out of all this. I'm sure they're getting a cut of all the commissions. That's probably how this deal came together. The ESA probably didn't write them a fat check now. They're like, hey, look, the, the revenue that comes in and all that, you guys are going to get your fair share cut of it for running the event. And I expect to see maybe a couple of Repop um, branded things at the show, but you know, it's going to still be branded around the E3 brand because that's obviously still a massive brand. How big is that massive brand? Well, when I'm doing research on new videos, it turns out that an Nintendo E3, Sony E3, Xbox E3, Ubisoft E3, pretty much major company and E3 are still very, very big search terms on Google and YouTube. And they're only increasing as we get further and further away from when E3 would begin. Well, a lot of casual gamer fans out there that maybe recognize the E3 brand are wondering, hey, isn't there usually this E3 event around now? Let me look up what's happening with this company or this console I own in E3. And obviously they're not finding anything in the search results because E3 didn't happen. Now look, this is no criticism against Summer Game Fest, no criticism against any of the replacement events that have happened. I think that they are doing, I guess, the best that they could realistically do. I think the Microsoft event killed it. I think Nintendo's last Direct killed it. I think the state of play was good. The thing is, is none of it's as exciting as smashing all of these really, really good events within a short period. So the key thing for Repop is going to be, we need to get this all fully organized. We need to not only organize the in-person event, we need to make sure these companies are committing to doing conferences and if not press conferences, at least these digital shows within a set short time period leading into the show floor. I'm also curious what's going to change about the show floor. I do like that we do have an idea of when it's going to happen. I know they didn't announce an exact day. They usually start on Tuesdays. So if I zoom ahead to June of 2023, uh, they said the second week probably means it's going to be the 13th. If they consider the first week of June to be the 4th through the 10th, then the second week of June would begin, usually on the 13th would be the traditional start day for E3. So I would presume then, but maybe they change up the format and change out up the days that the in-person event's happening to have media days and open days for fans. So I don't know. I don't really know how they're going to organize this event. I just know that Repop is trustworthy in, you know, getting this event off the ground. Now, obviously, this is where I throw it out to all of you. What do you guys think the future of E3 is going to be? Do you think this is a ultimately positive announcement the way that I do? Do you think they're actually going to fall on their face and they're not going to be able to get Nintendo and Xbox and Sony to commit? Because without those three companies it's going to feel like a shell of itself. It already felt a little off without Sony there. Do you think they can even get Sony to recommit just because Repop is such a trusted company with these sorts of events? Sony has been at things like PAX in the past. So there isn't a relationship between Sony and this company. So maybe that's how they get Sony back by not having to go through the seemingly really poorly organized ESA, who I guess they do a fine job with the ESRB rating system, but Besides that, nothing else seems to be very well streamlined at that company. So you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Are you excited or are you disappointed? All I know is, assuming Nintendo's there, we're going back to E3 next year, folks. And I can't wait to give you all that juicy coverage. I'll catch you guys in the next video.